presentation. And you know, um, with that being said, I'm, I'm curious if two guys kiss at a party, are they gay? That is my question I'm asking. If two guys kiss at a party, are they gay? Why, why not? Well, you can't like just assume that way. They could be bisexual, or they could be a completely, um, the kiss might not even mean anything. Yeah. Or, like there could be a lot of factors in there to decide whether or not they're of the, of the or that they're homosexual. So, if two guys kiss at a party, I don't think that like inherently makes it gay. Anybody else? Personally, I choose not to focus on things like that. I mean, like that's just how I am. Like if it's not about me or like has to do with me, then I mean, there's no point of me like, not necessarily paying attention, but I mean, caring. That's right. right. I can dig that. I can dig that. We gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna get into specifically the hubris you you you, you hit uh, you in right now when I say hubris the mode of thinking we gonna have a time to get to that specifically so I definitely thank you for getting into that who I see your hand up here yeah for me just my first reaction would be yes okay what and and, and and based off of just the first reaction like how how would you rationalize in terms of being like yeah that that was gay I would just see it Yeah. I'm trying to think I would notice. Like, you know, if you're at a party, there's like a lot going on. Uh, I, I guarantee I ain't gonna know, I ain't gonna cap it at all. I know how I'm conditioned to understand heterosexuality. I know for a fact, I mean, the party can be packed. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even just speaking for me. I think that in, 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 in general, you know what I'm saying? We over here playing beer pong. You suck. You know what I'm saying? Damn, hit it. You feel me? Somebody kissing over there, and I know it's the same sex. I think that based off of how we're conditioned to kind of surveil the room, even subconsciously, I think it might catch our attention. You know what I'm saying? But these three right here, I think that the, I, like, you know what I'm saying? Those are some some very real responses. And Kasai, you're supposed to speak last. You know what I'm saying? You ain't supposed to, supposed to get into that. Uh, any, 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 anybody else? Just one more, one more, one more, one more take. I was gonna say like I'm kind of changing, but like my first initial thought, I was like, yeah. yeah. My, my first initial thought, no cap at all, as professor, I'm on my Dave Chappelle tip, gay, 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 right? Definitely like, oh um, yeah, that's definitely gay. But today, what I want to get into is how we are indoctrinated to have a very limited, rigorous perspective on not only gender, but also sexuality, and how we are conditioned to understand how these gender expressions happens, how we're able to kind of determine and or not determine how a person orients themselves. So just to, I feel like to start off, to, to, to get it where we are kind of thinking about some particular things, um, I've never done this in the class. I think I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great um, mishap of mine as being a professor. Uh, Y'all know my name is George Lee. My preferred gender pronouns are he, him. You know what? I'm actually cool with they too. You know what I'm saying? They and them, they don't even bother me. Like, you can refer to me as they and them, and they'll be what they is. You know, it is what it is. To get it started, though, after, you know, I feel like I, I, I see some of y'all thinking, even the ones that didn't respond, I see y'all thinking like, damn, what are what, we doing today? So, I'm going to start off with a note on language. Language is vibrant, it grows, it changes, it develops generationally, culturally, and demographically. Language also creates and expresses meaning. This is particularly true with the language of diversity and identifies. Language must be, language must not demean, exclude, or defend, or offend, or defend, but we know a lot of times it does. We must allow others to self-identify for the definitions and terms that vary for every room. Why do you think I'm starting now talking about language? Is this you personally? Why do you think, like, why, why this start?
what is the difference between sex and gender? I'm just curious to hear some of y'all responses. Sex is like the scientific definition, I think it's like there's only two options to be male and female. Right. And then like gender is not something that like affects itself. So it means that you're either male or it's female and it's either male or it's female. Okay. Good for you. <laughs> Very appropriately, we're going to start this conversation. We're going to start this workshop of trans humble negativity with a mini lecturette about social constructs. Um, a lot of us like to think that there are a lot of naturalization, naturalizing things, uh, components about sex and gender that we like to kind of correlate. And we literally, uh, uh, I feel like, conveniently ignore how a lot of the things that we ascribe to what things mean or things that were agreed upon in a particular society, right? So just to make sure we clear, and I definitely make sure I have this term on the test, social construct. It is something that exists not on, not, not an objective reality, but as a result of human interaction, it exists because humans agree that it exists. Yesterday, I was taking my kids to, uh, I'll take them to the babysitter. I'll take, I'll take them to the babysitter in my car. Uh, me and the wife got a new car last year. In this car, we have a screen where my kids are able to watch TV. All right? So, yesterday, one of the movies my kids was watching was the movie Bees. Show of hands, who's familiar with the movie Bees? Who's seen the movie Bees? Okay, two people. All right. Damn good movie, definitely. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it like 50 million times with my kids because when you have kids, you watch movies a lot over and over and over again. Um, in the introduction of this B movie, however, they are quoting, uh, uh, it starts off with a fact about aviation laws. And what it says about aviation laws is according to human, uh, according to aviation laws, the construction of a bee should not be able to fly because literally the construction of their body defies aviation laws. To me, now that I've seen the movie 50 million times, to me this illustrates how a lot of the things that we have in our society, even the things that we think is like capital T truth and it would exist even if humans weren't around, it show you how it's bullshit. And when I say bullshit, it means that even if we were able to exist, that if I throw an apple, it comes to the ground, and we say that's gravity, we can define and understand how literally the conception of gravity is something that is agreed upon in a particular society that then says, okay, that thing that happened, it is that concept we say it is. Because I don't know if y'all know it or not, but, you know, uh, melanated people's hair grows in defining of gravity. It literally grows towards the sun. So we see how even when you think of the laws of gravity, there's always an exception to the rule and or literally something to kind of expose how this is literally a social construct. So when it comes to gender and sexuality, just like the aviation laws of flying, just because we say it can't be don't mean it can't be. Does this make sense? Do y'all get the aviation uh, uh, law Bees fly still, even though they're not, uh, not within aviation law. Y'all get what I'm getting at in terms of social construct. In general terms, in general terms, sex refers to the biological differences between males and females, such as genitalia and genetic differences. Usually they say, you know, if you got two X chromosomes, that means you're a female or a woman. If you got an X and a Y chromosome, this means you're a male or, you know, a man. Gender, however, is more difficult to define, but it can refer to the role of a male or a female in society known as gender role or an individual's concept of themselves or gender identity, which means, you know, Micah, Drew, and I forgot your name today. Mason, I remember that, Mason. Mason, Mason, when they gave their distinction between gender and sex, you feel me, we see that they were you know, getting at it very, very greatly in terms of the distinction between the two. Any questions so far?
Which brings us to the first social construct we're going to really explore. Gender, gender, gender. Gender roles and society norms and expectations regarding how men and women should behave or present themselves based on biological sex. Now, if I said that biology is also a social construct, do y'all know what I mean by that? Everybody know if I if I would say biology is a social construct, does this mean that biology is fake? <laughs> Making sure here we got you know gender identity. A, express, a person's innate, deeply felt psychological identification as a man, woman, or somewhere on the spectrum which may or may not correspond to their sex assigned at birth. And then we have, well, I know a lot of us are in this room, based off of how we performed and how we identified ourselves through, at this point in the semester. A lot of us, most of us are trans, I said trans, most of us are cisgendered which means it describes how our assigned sex at birth as male or female is congruent with the individual's gender identity as man or woman. As a show of hands, who is familiar with the ongoing social media debate of how many genders are there? Who is familiar with this debate? Okay, so a couple of us. A couple of us. I ain't gonna put nobody on the spot just yet, because I know all of us are conditioned to understand gender as being very binary. But, you know, we're going we gonna, we gonna to get to some things. We're going to get to some things. When it comes to gender expression, what I find is a lot of people have a very fallacious assumption that gender expression is literally based off of people being able to choose to be objects or food or, you know what I'm saying, anybody because they feel like it. And not really recognizing the validity of gender and how gender is always already something that's fluid. You can put fluid inside of this container. The fluid will take the, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the figure of this container. If you put fluid in the, in the cup, it, took the, uh, the, it, will, it will take the container of the cup. I think gender operates the same exact way. And what I find is that many people will not understand LGBTQ or really what it means to be trans. And they'll be like, well, uh, if I want to be a dinosaur today, can I just wake up and say I'm a dinosaur? Well, even though I'm black, can I just identify as being Asian? It's like, you don't recognize how gender is fluid and how everything else she said is fundamentally not the same thing as gender. And what I find is that many people don't understand gender expression. So y'all know me being one of those millennials. I like memes. So I threw this one right here. In this meme, I think we have illustrated, I feel like ways for us to be able to visually understand how Gender orientation, gender identity, and gender expression are all different things. However, they correlate with each other in terms of how we understand our systems. We know that gender orientation is a subjective experience of a physical sex, i.e. what is happening in your brain and how you understand yourself under the, what we said in terms of gender orientation. We know that gender identity is subjective to the experience of cultural sex and understanding that in different cultural settings, there are different ways to understand how gender can be performed and or be positioned. And then we have gender expression, the subjective experience of communicating gender orientation and gender identity. And again, what we find is that much of our society is sexually illiterate, meaning they do not, meaning most of our society does not have the ability to read and or write situations dealing with gender. And sex. I mean, I recognize that gender and sex is different things, but I recognize that a lot of us are not able to parse out the distinctions between gender and sexuality. So we end up conflating the two. On that piece of paper that I had y'all pull out at the beginning of the class, I want you to write down five things. I'm going to give you about two minutes to write about this. I think this is a great activity because it forces us to really confront a lot of the things that we do as gender peoples that many of us probably don't recognize. So on this piece of paper, I want you to write five ways that you are proud to express your gender. And if you ain't proud, five ways that you know you express your gender. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I know that opening a door for uh, the opposite sex makes it seem I'm a gentleman, and that's one way that I can express my gender. Um, I know that me understanding myself as being a breadwinner or being a, you know, provider is one way that I embrace being a man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know that in terms of being uh, heterosexual, being a cisgender man, I know that I can publicly give affection to the opposite sex. I know won't, no, won't nobody look at me crazy or think I'm trying to force my sexual orientation onto them. You know what I'm saying? I, know, I think that is very much tied to me being cisgender. I know that I can beat on my chest and any different understanding of me being a black man to make it where my sanity would not be questioned because I'm beating on my chest. Because that's something as a man I know I ain't got to worry about doing. I know that if I go to South Oval and I decide to stand on a soapbox and I decide to, to, to rant and literally be on a soapbox, I know I won't have to worry about someone kind of uh, uh, interpreting my words in the ways that I know women will be interpreted. And that is one way that I enjoy being. Do, 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 do these examples make sense, or, or do I get a lot more examples? All right, cool. Okay, for Shop to be is that I have it where in the objectives there are different terms. We talked about how we're going to get into some terms in history. You know, usually sometimes I have it where the workshop is split up where we go to this and then we go to this and then we go to that. I kind of try to uh, incorporate it all together where we're constantly thinking about history, constantly thinking about different terms, constantly going back to different concepts. So hopefully I can dive with you and ride with you into at the end of this. Let me know in email how, how y'all like this workshop today because I really want to make sure I'm as good as possible. Um, gender binaries. I know when it comes to heteronormativity, when it comes to trans negativity, the binary nature, the binary understanding of gender is a lot of, is, 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 is usually what a lot of people get caught up in that justifies literally being able to deny the humanity of somebody else because they don't fit in the binary of gender. Our innate, deeply uh, felt psychological identification as man or woman identified somewhere on the spectrum which may or may not correspond with our sex assigned at birth. We as a society often lump together sex assigned at birth and gender, however, they are distinct. Definitely remember the visual that I showed y'all uh, two slides ago. This, uh, uh, this Sabbath uh, operates as the realm of biology. Gender is typically associated with psychology and often deeply ideas of self. When it comes to the binary nature of gender, we gotta recognize that sometimes binaries literally limit what we can be. And even though binaries are seen as the norm, they're not natural. That is one of the main things I want us to understand when it comes to trans hormone negativity. It is a lot of the things that we deviate in terms of credibility or something being illegitimate or legitimate. We usually kind of conflate normalization with naturalization. We can't do that. Well, sexual identities. A self-identification such as lesbian, straight, bisexual, gay, etc., that refers to the genders of those who are sexually, romantically, emotionally, intellectually, or spiritually attracted. When we know about the sexual identity, and it may also refer to the sexual orientation identity, which is which is when people identify or disidentify as a sexual orientation. What I know about the University of Oklahoma and what I know about universities across the country is that when most college kids come to universities, uh, you are literally going through the process of understanding your own gender identity and your own kind of sexual, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, I guess, self. So I think when it comes to a lot of us knowing and understanding ourselves as gender beings or as sexualized beings, we tend to, I feel like, not have enough understandings to even able to understand ourselves, which is why I think we have so many people going through things like depression or going through different mental health issues because of how we're conditioned to understand ourselves. And when it comes to binary, she we can't fit in the binary, it might lead to you questioning things about yourself, your self-worth, you know what I'm saying, how you position, how you value. Which leads me to a discussion question. Is sex a social construct? Why, why not? Good question. Um, I think that 
Maybe. Now, are you saying that biology is a social construct because I said it or because you, you feel that way, but because you understand that way? I understand that way. Okay. So how would, so, so, so if I was being, I guess, an advocate for the devil, <laughs> you know, uh, and, I, and I wanted to ask you, well, how, how do you lump biology and sex together? What's the relationship? What do you mean that it's a social construct? Like, how would you explain? Well, lump sex and biology together, like, Anybody else? If you got something else here. Else? Another term, sex assigned at birth. This is the binary that precedes all other binaries. You know, when it comes to baby showers, when it comes to gender reveals, it is usually, you know, pink or blue. Barbie dolls or you know, race cars. The binary of gender will adhere to the typical masculine feminine norms and how we understand feminine, femininity and masculinity being a dualistic energy that is always kind of codified by each other. What we know in terms of sex identified at birth is that the term is generally associated with the category or male condition, female condition, and into sex condition. These are medical conditions. These are medical conditions. These are medical conditions that make up the biological attributes. And the reason why I repeated that three times and make more sense as we keep it going. Any questions so far while we've been far brought up to the next thing? Yes. 